Are, are there any guys that, that are that age to do it? I mean, we see in MMA, Dan Henderson's 41 years old. He's about to fight 25-year-old John Jones for the UFC light heavyweight title in September. Uh, does that happen where guys can move into their 40s and still compete at, a, at an international level? Well, it's not something you see every day, although you go to an open tournament and, and you might have a, a guy who decides he wants to wrestle. It's just, it's just kind of dangerous. You know, cause I was in New York uh, for the New York Athletic Club. They have a, a big international tournament there every year. They have wrestlers from Russia, Mongolia, uh, Cuba. A lot, a lot of different teams come out, and the top U.S. wrestlers are there. And uh, last year, they one guy decided to come out and and, and wrestle, but he was uh, you know overage. Definitely, he was not <laughs> overage. I like that overage, term. Overage, not That's overweight. Good. Overage. <laughs> You know, he, he was uh, way past his prime, and he thought he should come out and, and wrestle a few matches. And and it was like watching, uh, like, a train wreck. You know what I mean? Wow. It's like, oof, don't do not do that. Don't do that. <laughs> it was uh, it, it just looked dangerous, you know? Yeah. So you wouldn't advise uh, for anybody like that to, to keep going, and, uh, and I wouldn't either. It's a high-level competition, and, you know, these kinds of things are usually a young man's game. For some reason, we see freaks of nature in the UFC, but uh, you know, testosterone replacement therapy, I guess, is a hell of a drug, as they say. So yeah. So what do you think? Do you think that's something that's a reason why? Is it because of the steroids? Is it because of the? Yeah. I mean, you got to figure it is, right? I mean, wh- why else? You're not really seeing it in any other sports, and when you do see it in the other sports, you know, it's guys like Roger Clemens and and stuff like that, and they're. You know, they have all sorts of steroid allegations. I think that, uh, you know, testosterone replace, replacement therapy, it's it's legal technically with the athletic commissions, but um, it's, 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 a, it's a weird thing. I don't know if I would uh, take it. I don't know if I would trust the long-term effects of it, uh, you know, on a personal level. But if you're trying to compete and, and do that at, at the highest level, I don't know. It's it's a tough one for me. On the one hand, I don't want to fault the guy for trying and really trying to to continue and stay relevant and stay at the top of his game. But at the same time, uh, you wonder if it is cheating. Well, I think it's just a, a nicer name for it eh? when you call it testosterone. <laughs> what is it? Therapy. Yeah, replacement therapy. But right. I mean, you're allowed to do it within the parameters of, of your, your ratios of testosterone to epitestosterone as far as the, the athletic commission is concerned. So there's a certain amount of, you know, it is legal technically. Uh, Dana White, the UFC president, even came out and said, uh, yeah, it's great. It's a great thing. It's, it's what, it's 4-1 to one, uh, for the World Anti-Doping Agency and 6-1 to one for the Las Vegas yeah. uh, Athletic Commission. Yeah. And and Overeem was sixteen to one. Yeah, yeah. I mean, come on, that's just <laughs> crazy. What is it like for the Olympics? As far as do you know what the ratio, what your ratio can be? Well, for the World Anti Doping Agency, it's it's four it's to one. Four to one, right? Yeah, and and you know, for like I said, it's six to one for the other commission there. But yeah, I mean, I don't, I don't feel like people are going to come out and say that they're taking. Until they get caught, you know it's, it's such a tricky subject. Some people Don't... are though. Some people are coming out and saying yes. Like Forrest Griffin, after his last fight uh, against Tito Ortiz, he said, "Yes, I'm on TRT. I You're was kidding. on it." No, no, he came out and he said it. And guys are just owning up to it. Frank Mir has said, "Yep, I do it." Dan Henderson says, "Yep, I do it." Uh, Come on. Nate Marquardt was caught, and he had elevated levels, so now he says he doesn't do it anymore, uh, and he just won a strike force title. So, you know, I don't know. You know, it, I guess going without it has worked for him, but a lot of these guys come out and say, yes, I'm on testosterone replacement therapy. Hey, it's legal, you know? I mean, if it's legal, there's no reason why they shouldn't come out and say, yes, this is what I'm doing, but they are manipulating their testosterone levels. And admitting right. to it without getting caught right. for anything because they don't have to be caught for anything. Their levels are within the legal limit. They might be six to one, but that's okay. So 
or they have a doctor's note giving them an exemption otherwise. Well, the exemption is the testosterone replacement therapy. That's the exemption. It's a therapeutic use because they uh, they lack testosterone for some reason. Well, don't you start losing testosterone? Doesn't your body stop producing it because you've taken steroids? Well, that is uh, one one theory is that due to past steroid use, because you were, I guess, producing testosterone on a supercharged level during steroid use, if you stop taking anabolic steroids and stuff like that, then your testosterone level drops and you need it therapeutically to uh, get you to a normal level. Otherwise, you just, I mean, I guess you'd completely uh, crap out. Right. So uh, I I feel like uh, in amateur sport, it's, it's almost like a shame if you get caught. Yes. And and nobody wants to talk about it, but it's so prevalent in sports. Like, so many positive tests in before the the, the, the games, like weeks leading up, mm-hmm. and then even during the games. Yeah. And I'm so, sure we haven't heard the last of it. I mean, and then, you, you know, there's different countries that have the best science and spend the most money, and they can pass all the tests. And they win a lot of medals, and then you kind of wonder why. Right. But I'm not pointing any fingers at China or the United States. I would never do that. (laughs) To China or the United States. I would never point any fingers at those countries. I think they do everything upstandingly. Yeah. Especially China. I'm scared of those guys. There's a lot of them. No no kidding. (laughs) (laughs) David Zilberman, it's been fantastic talking to you. Uh, Promise uh, that you'll come back on the show. Anytime, anytime.